I do not honestly know how I'm going to follow the last speaker. Uh, I was fine until that speech was given, and now I'm a little overwhelmed. Um, thank you, Troy, and thanks to all of you for uh, letting me be here with you today. Um, I'm proud to be here supporting the, the critical work of Equality Utah. When I ran for city council, Equality Utah was not only my ally, they were a trusted advisor and they provided critical support that I needed at a time that's very stressful. Running for office was something that sapped a lot of energy out of me and it's, very, it's a very exciting thing to do, but it takes a lot of support and so the work that Equality Utah does, it made my life about a million times easier and it continues to get better as there's more and more candidates, you don't feel like you're the only one. Um, I've always been proud of my family and proud of my Utah heritage. I grew up on a farm in Western Weber County and the values that I learned on that farm and the values that I learn every day from the interactions that I have with my family are, are something that are very important to me. And the, the farm that we grew up on, my family trekked across the country with other members of their faith and when they got to Salt Lake City, they settled here for six months. And once they settled here, uh, they were told by the church to then move to Weber County and settle Weber County. So my family actually settled the area that I live in, and I've grown up and lived within 10 minutes of where uh, my family settled uh, over 100 years ago. Um, my dad is a police officer, and my mom's a medical assistant. And growing up, I kind of had this interesting mix of politics and law and justice, and then what I call the kind of the center of my universe, my mom's heart. Uh, my mom works in an oncology clinic, so growing up, my mom took me to hundreds and hundreds of funerals. And to this day, she writes a handwritten note to every single one of her patients that passes away. And so having that mix of my dad working in law enforcement and my mom working with individuals at a time when they uh, are, are struggling with something that they ultimately probably won't survive, it kind of created this, this mesh of passion for justice and for, for treating people with respect. And ultimately that led me to run for the city council. And one of the things that's so important about the local level is that you're able to address the same issues that individuals uh, at, at the federal level and the state level are also addressing. Um, issues like housing and employment and making sure that we're paying fair wages and those type of things. All of those types of things can be addressed at the state and local level as well as the federal level. And it's incredibly important that we get involved at the local level and that we have individuals that run for office at the local level. And that's certainly what motivated me to run for office at the local level. Um, I campaigned really hard. I started in February. I got started early. I tried to finance myself really well. I ultimately outspent my opponent and outraised my opponent. But in the end, I lost. And it wasn't a, a, a loss that stings because I lost. It was that I lost by 118 votes. And so you spend, the la I've spent the last two years kind of racking my brain, you know, what could I have done more of? What could I have done, you know, to, to win? And ultimately the lesson isn't that you lost, it's that you need to get involved again and again and again. You can't get beat and sit down. You have to stay engaged and stay involved. And I think that's the overwhelming legacy of what we have to do today, is we are so close to victory on LG, issues. I mean, we've won marriage. We will soon win marriage nationwide. And now is the time to circle the wagons and focus on trans issues. It's time to re-energize ourselves, reinvigorate ourselves, and get ready for the next fight. Because we are a community. We are not a collection of individuals. And, and I think that's the overwhelming legacy and message of what we're doing here today. It's about getting ready for the next fight, for the next battle and for the next uh, uh, movement. And um, so you, the, the reason that I share my personal story and the reason that we had you know, Riley up here sharing his personal story is that personal stories have power. When LGBT people share our stories, it's powerful. Um, you know, you, you look at Rosa Parks and what she was able to accomplish and it's true that none of us will probably ever be a Rosa Parks. But the fact of the matter is, is it wasn't her action that led Rosa Parks to captivate a nation. It was her personal story. It was that picture of a small seamstress, a hardworking woman 
whose story of indignation is what inspired a country. It wasn't the fact that she refused to give up her seat. It was the story behind the woman that refused to give up her seat. It was that we value people who are hardworking and contributing members of society, and that this hardworking and contributing member of society uh, suffered a, a, an act of discrimination. And it was her willingness to share her personal story that motivated people and that kind of turned her into a lightning rod. And when LGBT people share our stories, there's the same type of power. You can imagine what it was like when we elected the first LGBT person. And there's great examples of elected LGBT officials here in the state of Utah. You can imagine how awkward it would be to have to tell Senator Jim DeBacchus that he can't marry his, par his longtime partner. You can imagine how awkward it would be to have to tell former state representative Jackie Biskupski that she doesn't deserve to be the mother of her child. And when you have to confront those personal stories and those stories of, of personal suffering and heartache, it makes it so much harder to, to ignore the fact that, that change is needed. Um, I, I, I speak a lot about authenticity, and I think authenticity is a value that is often overlooked as something that's incredibly important. Authenticity is what motivates you to run down and get married the first time you have an opportunity. It's what motivates you to tell people your true gender. It's what motivates people to come out at 14 years old. It's what motivates individuals to be themselves. It's that core value, that, that basic human identity that is at your core. That is what authenticity is. And, and authenticity is something that often goes in, in line with our values. And we hear a lot in our state about Utah values, and, and it's often hard to pinpoint exactly what Utah values are. But my family's been here since 1863. And so I feel pretty comfortable talking about Utah values, and I'll tell you what Utah values are. Utahns, we're pioneers at heart. We love our families, and we love them whether they're big or small. We love our children, and we honor our mothers and fathers. We spoil our pets, and we cry when they die. We don't always agree, but we know how to come together to circle the wagons and to push forward when the going gets tough. We are fiercely proud of who we are, and we have parades every July to celebrate it. Now, Oftentimes you hear that LGBT folks have different values than, than Utah values. And so I would like to kind of explain what LGBT values are. Well, us LGBT folks, we're pioneers at heart. We love our families and we love them whether they're big or small. We love our children and we honor our mothers and fathers. We spoil our pets and we cry when they die, oftentimes too much. We don't always agree, but we know how to get to come together, to circle the wagons, and to push forward when it's needed. We are fiercely proud of who we are, and we have a parade every June to celebrate it. <laughs> Authenticity is a universal value. It holds the promise for a fairer and more just Utah. It is something that cannot be weighed, and it doesn't shine in spotlights and it doesn't carry the fanfare of fame. At its core, it is what today is about. Now is the time for all of us to remain authentic. We cannot let our successes define our movement moving forward. We have to focus on what unites us, on our authentic identities. We cannot fall into old habits of us versus them. We can't let our successes become a reason for gloating and rubbing in the faces of others. Authenticity requires us to be authentic to our individual selves, to our core and to our values. A and we cannot let anger and hostility poison opportunities for cooperation and compromise. Oftentimes, for example, the, the church coming out and endorsing non-discrimination ordinances. I've heard a lot about whether it was an authentic gesture, and I think it is. I, I, I think we can't fall back on, oh, well, they used this language or that language, and thus they didn't mean what they said. The fact of the matter is they came out with a public statement. They, they extended a hand 
and authenticity requires us to extend a hand back. I think the most important thing to remember is at the end of the day, if we're authentic to ourselves, our white picket fences look a hell of a lot like everybody else's white picket fences. Thanks. <laughs>